All right. Good morning, folks. Probably can't see me, but I am hiding here. <laughs> uh, we are going to change a set of breaker points on this old engine and uh, solder in a pair of condensers. Now, I'm sure a lot of you know what condensers are, but if not, I'm going to show you. Usually they come in a box looking like this. If I open up this box here, you're going to see they look like this. And they get soldered in. So these get tapped into the stator and then you end up soldering them in place. You solder the wires on them. And your breaker points, when you get them, they come in a little box like this and they look like this. Very simple. There's a little cam lobe that slides onto the crankshaft of these and this little uh, fiber tab runs along the, the uh, cam lobe, the lobe on the crankshaft. This is a cam lobe. It is a cam though and that's what it, that's what opens and closes it. It comes with a little bit of grease too. You want to put on your cam, the crankshaft, and make sure there's no rust on your little cam because if so, it's going to wear down that little fiber and then your points are not going to open as much. So, uh, anyways, let's get to it. Enough blabbing, although I'll be blabbing through the video anyways. Um, now, I did another one of these the other day, so I should have almost all my tools here. Pretty much all of these older engines, all of these older Rotax are the same. Mm, that one's on there pretty tight. I may be needing my little extension. I'll be right back. I'm using my impact driver for this. It's nice to have these around. It was a lot faster that way. Alrighty, I know I have that right here. I don't even need an extension on that bracket. I think just like this. This holds the older people used to call it a starting cup. It's what the uh, starting dogs grab when you pull the cord. So this here should just come right off. It's off like that. I'm gonna pull this little plastic cover off. There's two little tabs here, one on either side. That comes off. I'm just gonna roll the belt around and take it off as well. The belt's off. Set it under here. Now I get this guy, my socket I need for that. We're gonna pop that flywheel nut off. It's off. That's all there is to that. <laughs> then we're gonna take our puller, thread that all the way back out. We're going to pull the flywheel off this. I try to make sure these are threaded in somewhat even. I'm not too particular. Let's use that little impact. I always, always get them started first. Oh, and then I throw the socket over the way. That's good they got. They don't have to go in too far. You'll know if they're even or not because the center of this puller doesn't line up with the crank. This should thread into here pretty easily. Should. 
Yeah, always make sure it threads in before you start doing it with the impact. A few folks around here are these vintage snow wheels. Hmm. I'm not getting that lined up here. It will thread in easy, right there even. So that don't line up. That does. That lines up on the crank nicely. Let me put this in a little further here. There. Okay. I've had a socket fit on there that works great as well but I, I'm just going to use an adjustable to crank that loose just to get that off it'll pop off you'll hear it it'll make a good, good bit of noise socket is the best or even a wrench but uh, I have a lot of my wrenches up in the old house still Try that here. Put some pressure on it, give it a little tap. Yeah, we'll try her some more. We'll just take it off the rest of the way with this. off easier than that, but whatever. No big deal. Turn the pull back out. That's one there. Set it with the flat one I took off. It's another Allen head bolt here holding it on. Sometimes they like to stick in there, of course. Never fails. Mm -hmm. Then you have to try to fight to get it back out. There's another one up here. That's it for the Allen head bolt. It holds the side cover on. But then what you have is you have to remove that stator. The stator, it's this right here, it's that one. So Now, there's already marks on this one where the stator goes back on, but I'm going to be hooking the light up anyways to see if it's in time or not. Because newer points are going to have a lot thicker uh, point tab that connects with the, with the lobe that opens it. So I'm not going to put it back in place and trust that. So with a thicker lobe, with a thicker tab, that usually means the points, the breaker point should open sooner. So it's going to cause it to spark sooner, which is going to mean it's in, it's too far advanced the timing. It was a thinner tab wore down, then it doesn't open 
as soon, which means it's in the retired mode. So it would fire after top dead center. And uh, if it's firing too far ahead on these things, they overheat and you end up with a nice little hole in the top of your piston on a two stroke. I don't think you really want that to happen. I know I don't. Now that's done, you just pull this off. Now we find the size that fits in there. Is it this size? I don't remember now. It sure is. So I'm going to put an extension on there. Pop that in here. It's four nuts to hold this side cover on. Once you get those Allen bolts off, you remove the stator. And there's a washer behind each nut. Now the other thing we want to do, pull off any spark plug wires, is your coils are going to come off with this cover. And it's just a matter of doing this and catching your washers as they come off. Here's one washer here. And one more one, three more washers there. That's what we end up with, your stator. And, uh, You'll end up with a spring, a washer, and then you got your seal here. And that seal looks like it's kind of been leaking just a little wee bit, but I'm not 100% sure of that. But if it looks like it's leaking, I'm going to be putting a little bit of goo on there. I really should replace it, but I didn't see a whole lot coming out of there, so I'm not going to be too, too worried about it. I will be checking the crank side as well to see how bad it's leaking. So I'm going to put this washer back on and do not lose your little flywheel key or else you're going to be searching for another one or buying one. I always check to see how badly they're war and that one's not war at all. So I'm going to set this out of the way. Take a quick look at me in the clutch and the clutch looks clean in there so I'm not worried about that. So I'm going to set this down out of the way. We're going to set this up here because we have to get to soldering this. Right there. All right, so I'm gonna get this plugged in here, my little soldering iron. And you can hear that inverse take off because it's gonna take a bit of power to run that. Next thing I wanna do, well, we're, we're gonna take those breaker points off. That's what we're gonna do right away. Remove those, just one little bolt that holds those on. Don't wanna lose these bolts either. There. One there. Now we're going to lift up these breaker points. There's just a little tab that they push into, and we're going to undo these nuts. I don't think I have a socket that size in here, so you know what? Vice grip time. You just basically undo that. That's all there is to it. Undo it like this. There's going to be one wire that gets one wire that runs to your to your ignition coil, and the other one runs to your condenser. And we have to unsolder the one from the condenser goes to the breaker points, and the other one from the condenser that runs to your ignition coil. So those are the two we are going to be removing and re-soldering back on. Very easy folks, anybody can do this. There we go. Points. The old breaker points are out. 
just going to thread these nuts on because I will save these just in case I need them. Oh, they were, they were burning pretty good. Do you have any burn like that? It's a sign of a bad heat answer. I'm gonna wait till my soldering iron gets hot enough here. I don't think it's hot enough yet, but we're gonna see here. I should run a little bit of sandpaper over the end of that. Let's get rid of some of that. I don't want it heating up all the dirt and the rest of the crap on there. I want it to heat up the solder. I am just heating this off my solar. That's what's operating this right now. And it's already starting to melt it. So we'll pull this wire off once we get this all melted up here. That one's off, that wire. Now, we heat this up and pull it off with this. It's too hot to get my fingers that close to it. There, it's off. We're going to do the same with the bottom one. Thumbs off. Thumbs off. Move them out of the way so they don't re stick. to get those condensers out of there. You just tap those out. That's all you do. So, I basically just take an extension or a socket, it doesn't really matter what you use. I just use an extension. Basically just put it like this here and make sure that's not gonna hit anywhere. That I put a socket right there. I put a put an extension. I mean, right there, and then I just tap it through. You'll see it'll come out like nothing. It's out. That one's out. Make sure you don't pull these wires off. That one's out as well. Very simple.